can I please come back uh, once and, and, t and tell a bit about Blender and everything sure. that's, uh, that's around that? So um, here you are. Um, uh, take it away. Thank you. Okay. Hopefully this can go into clipping mode. Thank you all. I'm uh, Monique. I'm Blender developer. Um, who knows Blender? Whoa, okay, I don't have to explain that much. That's Jeroen, also Blender developer. We're here together. And we're gonna, well, I only have 20 minutes, which is way too short to show Blender. Uh, but I'll talk a bit about Blender, what it is, the communities, our movies, and uh, what we've been doing. Um, Blender founded in the Netherlands, started by uh, Ton Rosendaal, who had his company. Uh, he started the basic development of Blender. And um, in 2002, when his company went broke, Blender already had a community. And it was the community who, garter, who gathered 100,000 euros in seven weeks, bought Blender from the company, from the investors, and open sourced it. It's 2002. So we were way ahead of Kickstarter and community-based development. So we started doing that already in 2002. After that, Blender gained popularity, became much and much mature. Uh, Jeroen and I, I think we, s we joined, we knew Blender since 2006, but we really joined the community in 2008, and where we um, also actively started the development, developing Blender and uh, doing some projects. So what you see here is um, when you start Blender, this is a scene in Blender. I'm curious, does anyone recognize this scene? <laughs> exactly. It's the latest movie that we're working on, Gooseberry. And this is one of the scenes uh, that will be in Gooseberry. So, um, to show off a bit what our community has been doing with Blender, because Blender is used worldwide by architects, artists, um, I want to show a demo reel of what people have been creating with Blender. <laughs> You've seen our movies. <laughs> so this is a demo reel. See if the sound is working.
lah. <laughs> So that, that was his demo reel. Um, every year we try to make a demo reel and it's done by the community. They just want to show off like, here, look, this is what we create, this is cool. Um, Blender is a 3D content creation suite, so you create 3D content for your, either your animation, your architecture, your advertisement, or just the ho for your hobby. Um, it's being developed worldwide by many artists, scientists, students, uh, developers, and um, we, ha we do have a, a community. So um, this is the Blender website. As you see, 2.74 was just released. And um, we try to release every six weeks. It's a challenge uh, for such a big software product, but well, we, I think we managed to do it. <laughs> Mostly it is two, three months. But we, do, we just do it in six weeks. And, um, and we have a large community. The nice thing about Blender is it's open. Uh, it's, not, it's open source, but it's also open. So we don't have a s centralized gover governance. Um, the community can do whatever they want, how they want to do it, and start their own initiatives, like BioBlender, which is a Blender version used for scientific visualizations. And this was, I think, an Italian lady, uh, Monica Soppe, who comes every year to the Blender conference to show what cool things she made. And um, in their area, they have um, a difficulty explaining how uh, DNA material works. When they go to conferences, they have this huge presentation with all those um, formulas and this is how it does, this is how it does. And um, Blender gives them a way to visualize things and to reach out to more people uh, to be able to understand what they're doing. Another initiative is Blender Cookie. Um, it's a team of a few people in uh, the US, and they have an online course uh, for Blender, and they run a total business on this. Uh, we also have people porting Blender to the web, full HTML, WebGL, and uh, you can create your models in Blender, uh, port it to their framework, and it will run on the web. And these are all people who had an ID, started it. Um, most of them came to the community for help, like, hey guys, can you help us? And the community is open and always willing to help. If you have a nice ID, you will always find people to help you set things up. Um, a nice initiative we did in the Netherlands was uh, for the Dutch School of Arts. And it was for the Department of Interactive Theater. Uh, I have the site here. And um, they had, uh, they were, they had a, a very cool ID. Um, and that is, um, they, they want to make theater a bit more interactive. Like, okay, um, you have a play, <coughs> but there is always more visualization presence in theater. So how can we make it a bit more interactive? Interactive and, and especially for theater, it's very important to look at the audience and see what, what, what they do and react on the audience. And with normal computer models, you can't react. So we, we uh, did something from, okay, <coughs> uh, we will capture the motion of the of the, of, the, of, of the actors on, on stage, but the director had uh, an artificial programming <coughs> language and could uh, change the outcome of, of that uh, performance and pro project that back to the stage. And we did a uh, proof of concept for this part uh, to, to get with the university in uh, Utrecht. Uh, yeah, the, the, school, high, the, 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 the high school of professional arts. Professional school, uh, the Dutch school of arts. And uh, the nice thing is, um, what they basically want to do is when an artist is on stage, uh, based on, and there were cameras pointing in, so we used the Microsoft Kinect uh, for that. And based on the input stream coming from the Kinect, um, you could, the director could change the projection, saying like, okay, now I want the light to be blue, or I want something to appear at the back uh, of 
of, of, the, of the screen or something like that. And this is a small demo. As I raise my hand, uh, the light is go, go, going up and down. not very important except that there is a visual programming language behind so I can do anything when I raise my hand. And this is done in Blender. It's, it's Python nodes. Well, name says it. Nodes written in Python. And a director can real time react on that. So while the stream is coming in, he can say, he can program and say, okay, uh, when an arm is raised, I want this to happen. And he can do it real time. And that was the whole basic idea, like, okay, make theater a bit more interactive and not having the same play every day, every night, but uh, that director could sit there and say, okay, now I want this and this and this to be done, when he raises his hand or uh, do a, a different kind of movement. And we did this proof of concept. I know Yalmar asked us to, <laughs> to show it here, but if you want to see it, it's at the um, Interactive Theater of the school of Dutch School of Art in Utrecht. Um, we call it HKU, Hogeschool Kunsten Utrecht. And uh, they, have a they have a studio there, and there's a setup there where, with projections, um, Kinex cameras, where you can go do this, and you will see different projections on, on the back of the wall. It's uh, pretty cool to see. Um, that is, for instance, one of the projects we did together with the Dutch School of Art. Let's see. Okay. So that a bit about community and the fact that, well, we leave it up to the community to come up with whatever they want, crazy ideas, and we just do it. Um, we also have Blender conferences. Uh, the next one is, uh, I think, in October this year. And um, the nice thing about these conferences is, is that it's not a, it's the conference is for everybody. So here you will see 95% of our users, maybe 5% developers. And the users, they just come there and show off. Like, okay, I did this. And that's really cool. It's, re it's really nice. And, um, and they bother the developers. They're like, hey, can you have this in? And can we have this in? So it's, it's always, it's three days, and it's three days of craziness. And we get people all over the world coming. Um, we started the one in the Netherlands, I think, 2002, yeah. and I think there were maybe a few people, and now we have over 300 people attending these conferences. So we probably have to move out of the Bali again, <laughs> search for another place. Um, to show off what the tool can do, uh, every two years the Blender Institute in the Netherlands produces a movie. But every movie has a technology target as well. So with Elephant Dream, the first movie made at Blender, uh, we wanted to see if we can do Hollywood quality renderings, a bit <coughs> Matrix-like renderings. And um, so during the movie, there's a lot of development going on with the tool. Can we do it? Can we do it? How do we do it? What are the formulas? And um, I think we kind of succeeded with that. So at the end, it was like, yeah, we manage. But it's gaining the knowledge uh, looking for the papers online, how to implement things, and uh, develop that in the tool. So it's not only creating a movie, it's also developing the tool. Um, I think somebody mentioned this one already, Big Bug Bunny. Um, I think one of the most famous movies of the Blender Institute. Um, does anyone know what the development target here was? But do you see a lot in this movie? Hair, exactly. Hair, grass, all hair simulation. Can we do hair simulation? And that's what we tried to do with Big Bug Bunny. Sintel. Any ID? <laughs> <laughs> oh well. <laughs> no, it, it, it was uh, the. Uh, it was two, two technical tar targets. One was a complete redesign of the whole blender, so you can't see that in, 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 <laughs> in the, the movie. movie. <laughs> the, the, the second one was uh, the, the way how an, an, an animators work with, with, with the tool was changed a lot, uh, and more in a professional way. So 
basi ba basically, you can't see anything of that for in, 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 mm -hmm. the, in the movie, but the tool got, got a boost, and, the, and we are still enjoying that to, to, uh, to as of today. Yeah, so and yeah. Um, this is really, we have a few, uh, we have key users, Every, anybody can uh, participate, mm -hmm. and during development, they do come up with uh, ideas, how things should work, how the pipeline should work, and, and how things should be solved. One, one, one thing we, uh, we did uh, was to uh, create a whole user interface of Blender in Python. Yeah. So uh, every, every, every everything a user controls, that's just Python code. Yes. The core of Blender, more calculation core, is, is C. And uh, with a whole user interface mm -hmm. uh, is written in Python. So it's C with a <coughs> complete Python layer on top of it. And um, now we're moving a bit more to OpenGL. Uh, having more things being uh, calculated and rendered in OpenGL because it's just a bit faster, uh, but still the core of the whole user interface is written in Python. And I showed PyNodes before, and that's really control nodes to control, uh, in, in this case, streaming uh, coming from a Kinect, and that was just written in Python. Just there is a full Python interface uh, in Blender to do this. Um, one thing we did for Tintel, um, when you make an animation movie, um, you generate lots and lots of files, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of files. And all these files are linked together. So what happens if the director comes and says, oh, but that jacket needs to be blue? Artist goes back, makes a copy of the file, starts changing it, and your part of your production is broken because he changed the file, he renamed it, but the link is still to the old file. So what happens during production, um, a lot of file links get broken. So you have a lot of broken links. And try to figure out which links are broken and where it should link to. We really have, I think since I was Terabytes of two data. terabytes of data. Uh, to, to, to be exactly, two, ta two, to, two terabytes of data as in something like an HTML export of a CSV CMS project. And then you have to find the broken links in two terabytes of files. That can take a lot of time. <laughs> so during production, there's a lot of time spent on fixing broken links. It could take days, weeks only fixing broken links, because scenes were broken. You would have a scene and then the jacket was missing and that sort of things. So uh, we wrote a tool, um, which basically, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it an asset management tool, because we have been discussing assets for already years in Blender and in the 3D community, like what is an asset? <laughs> um, but basically this shows your blend files and all links and all small assets you have. So if you have a broken link, uh, this tool will already pop up and show the artist or the one controlling the render form or the pipeline saying like, hey, you have broken links. And especially before they start rendering, it's important because if you, well, rendering is a very long process. Um, and if you have broken links, then after days you figure out, oh, uh, I have to start all over again because my scenes are not good enough. I was missing some files. And that's really time consuming. So uh, what you see nowadays before rendering, they check are all links okay, and then they push everything to the render form to start rendering. And this was really, um, well, many people were so happy with this. They were like, oh, thank you. Now I don't have to render over and over again. I wait for days for my uh, final renderings. Um, I can do this, and I know before I send it to the render form, uh, things will come out uh, as they should be. And I think this is one of the, the first big things we did yep. for Blender, um, for Sintel, uh, the movie Sintel. Um, then there was Tears of Steel. And um, the target here was, can we do a VFX? And with that, um, can we set up a whole production pipeline as for a VFX movie? Um, this is just an image I got one of, the, one of the simplest images I got from the, the internet. Um, just to give you a clue like, okay, how, how, what is a production pipeline? You start with an ID, 
you have the story, the storyboarding, and uh, when you go to production, people start creating the models, cr start creating um, textures, rigging. Rigging is the process of the, I call it also the, the bone structures, yeah. uh, how, uh, how, the, how the face should move. Um, so you have all these phases going through, and the idea was, can we do this also for special effects? With Sintel, uh, we, all, we already did this for an animation movie, a full animation movie, which was also a challenge, like how do you do it? And can we do this for special effects as well? And that was one of the goals of uh, Tears of Steel. Uh, what we did was the whole compositing part. There were two major developments during this process. One was the new renderer, the path tracer cycle, cycles, and the new compositor which really had to be rewritten to do uh, special effects, because with the old compositor it wasn't possible. Um, main technology target as well was support modern hardware te technologies, like GPGPUs. Graphics cards coming up, they have thousands and thousands of cores. Why not use that to calculate your renderings and your composites? So, um, I think it was Apple. Apple started. Apple started OpenCL. Uh, that's a, call it a framework uh, to parallelize between the CPU and your GPU. And uh, it was, I think we saw it in 2010 at SIGGRAPH. And we said, hey, we can use that. If we can use the power of the graphics cards, which are getting more and more powerful, and the CPU, we can do way much more. And we have more calculation power. And this is a benchmark we did for the cycles rendering, where you can see that for, I think... The CPU is around 300 seconds. Yeah. And, and the graphic card, what, what is still in the graphic card of three years ago, does it in 20 seconds. So <laughs> and it's and a major difference. difference. So we have, okay. And this is one of the, the main technology goals during uh, Tears of Steel is supporting modern hardware architectures uh, using the GPU and the CPU to calculate your rendering and your compositing. And uh, for that, we had to rewrite the whole compositor. And um, just to show off what compositing is a bit, again, we have somebody of the community who made a movie. That's a nice thing of having a community. They make your movies. Microphone.
tank. Just to get an idea on what compositing and lightning is. You see there's a lot of masking uh, happening there, images being brought in, masked, and every pixel is calculated. Okay, cool. That was a bit about compositing. So we wrote a whole compositor to do that for Tears of Steel. This is the movie we're doing now, Gooseberry. I uh, think uh, you know this one, what we're going to do. Let's see, I think I have it somewhere here, the teaser. Let's see. This is our latest project. My name is Michelle. Yeah, wait a sec. This is it. Hi. My 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 name is Michelle. And I am a Everything is confused. I, I was. Well, I, m I might be. I'm a, I'm a seed. Uh, no, I want to go home. Okay, that's the project we're currently working on. And the development target of, of this uh, is that a lot of uh, uh, studios around the world uh, will work together on the whole uh, uh, movie. No, normally in, 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 the, in the video industry, you get a task and you do that task and you send it back. And that's mo mo mostly a shot from the start to, 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 to the end. And what, what we are trying to do is that all the, those studios can work together, uh, find, uh, also, also see uh, <coughs> the, the work the other d do, and, and use it at, at, at the same time for their work. But we are, we are also supporting studios in Bra Brazil or China using a modem uh, just, just as, as an internet of uplink. And we have to find how many terabytes of data to that system. So it's, it's, it's really a technical challenge to get that working in a, in a, in a, in a good way. And that's the, that is what we are trying to do with yeah. this uh, movie. And uh, basically we designed a platform uh, where basically all assets are there, are, are kept there. And where, um, well, the, the producer can look at the production from uh, the server and all the studio worldwide can just work on those assets. And that's a platform uh, which we're developing. It's, uh, it's kind of a cloud, but uh, we discovered that what we're doing and by the amount of data that we're working with, there's no cloud solution out there. I mean, we're having terabytes of data. <laughs> so there is, there is a, a European funding like, okay, guys, if you can solve this, that would be really great. <laughs> And that's, that's pretty cool. And um, working with Blender, it's cool. It's uh, a lot of computer graphics, uh, creating nice movies, and also having um, cute, nice challenges like, okay, how we do real, real, real big data of uh, a lot of terabytes in the cloud and keeping everything in sync because it's the, the production of the movie. Cool. I think my time is yeah. up. <laughs> so. So, Wait a sec. any questions for Monique or uh, Jeroen? In the meantime, I'll show back of the breakdown of Tears of Steel. Yeah, again, a uh, question of finance, uh, <laughs> because I know <laughs> there's a foundation. I knew that one was coming up. That's why I left <laughs> it out of the presentation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from a startup, like we were always, 
have to look at uh, the money, of course. Cool. But uh, th th there's a foundation. Are you getting paid? Uh, um, yes and no. Um, Blender is being, uh, yes, we have a foundation. We have a developer fund. So we have people from the community paying every month for development of Blender. Mm -hmm. um, we have, <coughs> for every movie, uh, there is a fundraising uh, to get money in for development and the creative part. Um, so who are the ones funding? For the development fund, it's just the community, uh, people paying, contributing every month development. And with that, uh, we can pay two to five. And uh, to be honest, our funds have gone up, luckily. So we can pay 10, 15 to 20 developers now uh, working on Blender. Uh, for the movie, it's uh, people who just want to participate in the movie, have their name there, just want to be cool. And that's how we raise um, money for the movie. So that's one part of the movie. Uh, the Dutch Film Fund is the other one. And of course, if you're doing GPGPU and all this cool computer graphics, um, you get companies like Google, who's our main sponsor, uh, AMD, NVIDIA, HP, Dell, Intel, they all sponsor oh, us. Yeah. And um, they sponsor part partially financially. Uh, so Google, most of the time, is a financial sponsor. But for instance, AMD, NVIDIA, they sponsor with hardware. And even, for instance, when we did uh, GPGPU OpenCL, uh, they devoted four developers to the project. They say, hey, guys, here, four developers. They're going to help you with the project. And they sent you the newest hardware. So Apple okay. was so happy with us that they just sent us the new Mac Pro. OK, that's cool. They're like, OK. <laughs> A full-blown, the their most fastest computer, they said, OK, here, guys, here just, you just get it. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's nice. You know, you know the yeah. flower pot? The, bin. the new the bin? The bin? The yeah, can. the trash can. <laughs> Called the flower pot. And um, <laughs> <laughs> bloom pot. When, when, when we received it, we actually had some flowers taking. So I just made a picture of it and said, okay. So, uh, yeah, so it's all fundraising. So um, it's community paying and uh, companies paying this uh, contributing money. Unfortunately, uh, we know our software, uh, we can officially say it. Uh, I think our software is also being used at uh, Walt Disney and the big studios, Pixar. Um, but they don't contribute. <laughs> but they do say like, hey, thank you guys for the last release. It's already running in production. <laughs> uh, I, <laughs> like, okay. I, I was curious about it. I read the other day that Pixar released their uh, RenderMan uh, um, software True. for free. Yeah. How does that impact uh, your produ project? We're only happy with it. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, RenderMan uh, random, random is the best renderer out, 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 out there. And uh, it's... I'm, I'm not sure if it is totally free or that only the basics are free. So <coughs> I'm not totally certain if it is. Probably you have to pay if you use it commercially. Yeah. And for Blender, everything is free. And if you if you have don't don't have it, even the source you can download and add it. Yeah. Probably you have to write a plugin for Renderbond. There's already. There's already one. Already yeah. one. Yeah. Um, the, the nice thing about uh, uh, Pixar and, and uh, Walt Disney is that, um, and even Sony, they used to be very close. You know, uh, we don't give anything outside, we don't share knowledge, we don't share our technology. And you do see a movement, uh, I think the past two, three years, three years, that they start open sourcing their technology. They start coming out with their technology as well. So Sony came out with their p -techs. Disney. Uh, Disney came out with p -techs, sorry. And um, Pixar also started uh, open, sur uh, open sourcing their uh, open subdiff, uh, subsurface, yes. open subdiff. Open, open subdiff. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm trying to, to, to <laughs> see if I can use a better word for that. But it's open subdiff. And, um, and they open sourced it. It's something that you wouldn't think about five years ago. But they said, OK, here you have it. And, um, it's open. So you see a movement from these big studios also uh, open sourcing their technology. And it's, uh, it's great. It's also great. We have still time for one drink. So, uh, <laughs> cool. <laughs> Thank you very much. Bye -bye.
Yeah, so uh, everyone uh, at home and or in still in the office, uh, thank you, thank you here for uh, joining uh, uh, live. Uh, the next episode uh, will be in uh, June. in June in Finland. Uh, so I welcome you all to come. Um, and uh, don't forget Yelmer. Thanks, Yelmer, for <laughs> the majority of the, uh, the agenda and organizing and uh, the um, uh, video stream. And also Willemijn and Belinda, if they're still around, uh, for uh, taking care of some of the organizing uh, as well. So uh, please have another drink and uh, see you next time. Bye. Bye.